with video games now accounting for over half the UK's entertainment industry. It's about time the art and design behind them was the focus of a major exhibition. And the V&A's video games, Design, Play and Disrupt, seeks to fill that void. Focusing on the past 15 years that make up the mid-2000s to 2018, the exhibition explores the much-ignored design process behind the games that make up an industry worth £3.86 billion in the UK. Starting with a visual feast of what the exhibition promises, the first section soon looks at the creative process behind eight of the most exciting and innovative games and their designer's creative journey. From the large cinematic experiences of the AAA games like Bloodborne, to the smaller independent games like Journey. Every aspect of the design process is under the spotlight here. From initial sketches and character designs, through to world building backgrounds and mood influencing colourful landscapes. The planning behind complex timelines and character arcs are on show, as well as the coding and prototypes behind play mechanics and multiplayer elements. There are some nice little treats in here, such as the mocap suit and footage from The Last of Us, through to the sci-fi visual influences, organically generated creatures, and space design of No Man's Sky, and even the merchandising of games like Splatoon. There are plenty of opportunities for interactivity, with innovative games like Consume Me, which seeks to promote a well-rounded diet and a positive body image, and The Graveyard, which sees the player as an elderly woman walking through a graveyard to a distant bench in what Belgian designers Tale of Tales describe as more like an exploratory painting than an actual game. The next section of the exhibition explores the political and inclusive shortfallings of the video games industry. This was certainly my favourite section because it asked some difficult questions about gender, race, nationality and violence. Expert voices are backed up with facts and figures, as well as attempts from video games designers to rectify these injustices. It's actually quite impressive to see the curation behind the exhibition focus on the negatives of what is often a white male video games industry, as a comparison to the innovation found at the start of the exhibition. As if aware of the slightly depressing state of play, the curators then lift the spirits with a huge cinema-sized screen an impressively immersive sound system that showcases over 10 minutes worth of short films looking at anything from space battles to fan art and cosplay. The final stage of the exhibition is an arcade with a difference. Browser-based games like the ragdoll mechanics of sprinting game Quop, which was created by former cut copy bass player Bennett Foddy and Queers in Love at the End of the World, in which players have to interact with their partner before everything is wiped away are all given the arcade cabinet treatment. This weird and wonderful arcade gives visitors a chance to experience some of the more left-field offers of the industry, as these games get perhaps their first cabinet release. The last stop of any exhibition is the gift shop, and this one mixes some high-end purchases, such as framed artwork that rings in well over the £100 mark, as well as t-shirts, books, bags and small purchases for under £10, such as key rings. Overall, I really enjoyed the exhibition, but I feel that it started much stronger than it finished, and the £18 price felt a bit high for the amount of content. Had there been another room like the political and inclusive second room, or the deep dive into the design aspects of the first room, then I'd have no hesitation in paying the high entry price. But it was the punk style arcade that fell really short of my expectations, having been set previously very high by the rest of the exhibition. Ultimately, this provided a fizzled ending, rather than a big bang. There were only a handful of games in there, which meant that the wait to play any of them was actually quite long, and some of the games didn't overly benefit from a flashy marquee over what was just a PC with a keyboard and mouse control. Don't get me wrong, the first section of the exhibition is huge and very rich in content, and the promise of design, play and disrupt is certainly met by the exhibition's different rooms and sections. I felt a little bit like the exhibition parallels with No Man's Sky. The promise and entry price is certainly AAA, and the content does look stunning, but ultimately it fails to deliver on the full AAA experience. And like No Man's Sky, you can't help but feel a little bit let down by the expectation of that entry price. 
The main problem is that the Victorian Albert Museum is a AAA museum, and not some independent like Hallow Games. Having said that, I would still recommend checking out the exhibition if you have a keen interest in the rich characters, worlds and architecture of the often overlooked game design industry. If you're a student you can get in for the much more reasonable price of £8, and for this price the exhibition is amazing value for money. This is an exhibition for someone who wants to see the detail behind their favourite games, as well as be excited by developers pushing the envelope of gameplay. So set your expectations at a reasonable level and imagine you're in a smaller museum and this exhibition is well worth a couple of hours of your time. Let's hope if the exhibition tours, then either the slightly sparse arcade section is replaced, or that ticket price is lowered to suit. Video games Design, Play, Disrupt is on at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London until Sunday the 24th of February 2019.